Well, we're back. It's uh, still Nigeria Decides, and we're talking about power. And this, at this point, we're going to be looking at renewable and alternative sources mm. of power supply. Mm. And, of course, um, on this issue, we will be having uh, Olua Shemu Fadiora. Uh, he's a renewable energy professional. And we still have Dr. Weber Boer, CEO mm. Olin, and he is an energy expert. It's good to have you gentlemen in the studio. Now, uh, one of the issues, we've seen the lapses within the power sector and it's time to discuss the way forward and that's mm -hmm. looking at alternative sources of power. But at the end of the day, we are known to rely on hydroelectric power and gas supply, but we've had constraints in those areas. And other advanced countries are looking at solar and other renewable energy. Let's talk about solar first and foremost. Well, what I'd like to say about solar systems is that, uh, so if you, if you check Nigeria, for instance, if you do just a normal Google search, you're going to find out that Nigeria has an average six hours of sunlight every single day. In terms of potential, you'll find out, because I was watching in the backstage, you know, when they were talking about the fact that Nigeria needed to generate up to 200,000 megawatts. Mm. And it's interesting, because when I saw that, I actually went online and I saw that we can actually generate more than 400,000 megawatts Don't from solar. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking about potential. Mm. Do you understand? So if we have the potential to generate 400,000, and we're having issues with 200,000, which should be our target, and we're generating 4,000. I think the government needs to do a whole lot more because by the end of the day, the problem is still with the government. Yeah. You have an unlimited source of power. Every single day, the sun comes out. Depending on where you are, if you're in the north, it comes out as early as maybe 5.30, 6 a.m. In Lagos, maybe like 7, 8 a.m. And then, you know, in some cases, you have sunlight up to like, you know, I think in my own area, for instance, I still have my, I have a solar system at home. So I still have my solar panels generating power up to like 6.45 p.m. Mm. Mm. So if we have access to that, I don't know why we're, talking so much about us not having electricity. Well, if we look homes. at countries like the UK where they have the feed-in tariff as well as USA, the social investment um, tax credit to promote the use of solar panels, why isn't Nigeria also thinking in that direction as well? I think we need to ask Fashola <laughs> because truth be told, I was just thinking about the fact that if you look at the tax relief you get, you're getting up to about 30%, I think, in the US, if you're doing solar. And here in Nigeria, last year, February, the federal government actually changed the HS code for solar panels to something that's from zero tariff to 10%. So if we're saying they should give us tax breaks and tax cuts, and they're still increasing the tariff for you to bring in the solar panels that I don't think government is serious about We've doing had anything with 10 solar. Ten percent on having to bring in solar panels and a whole lot more to maintain and extra. Mm. What's your stance on that? If we're looking at energy that is supposed to be sustainable, right. and all we just need is little maintenance here and there. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, the the um, at a at a federal level. It's sort of at the administration level, there is actually, you know, like I've been talking about, there is actually quite a lot of support for off-grid and renewables and solar and so on. So this, this particular one, it was actually an example of one side of the government not, co not collaborating with the other side. So, uh -huh. you know, it was all the way up to the office of the vice president. There had been this push to make sure that solar panels, at least, were imported tax-free. Then customs went in, sort of changed the classification, and now it suddenly became 10%. And, and they basically said that, oh, because a solar panel can, can generate power, if it has any, anything on it that allows it to generate power, it should be taxed like a generator. And so basically what the, the result was that if a solar panel is brought in and you're using it to make furniture, let's say, then there'll be no tariff. But if you're using it to generate electricity, we're going to put tax on it. How, do, how does that make sense? It doesn't make common sense. So, and, and the excuse at the time was, okay, it's, we're trying to push towards you know, manufacturing or assembly of solar panels in Nigeria, which is fine, but you do that gradually, right? And, and there is actually a company called Oxano that does uh -huh. assembly here in Nigeria of uh -huh. solar panels in Lagos. Um, Blue Camel does it in Kaduna, so there is some of it, but obviously not nearly enough to, for, the, for what the market needs. And when you have, you know, like you said, an unlimited supply of energy from the but sun. But how feasible and is the investment this yeah. time around coming from government stance and supporting the sector? 
Sorry? How, how feasible is it yeah. when we're looking at investments from the government stance and right. then saying, well, we'll create some ease of doing business within right. this area. How feasible is it that we'll be able to actualize this dream of having these solar panels mm -hmm. being manufactured in Nigeria and then the everyday Nigerian can also have it, right. not pegging that expense to right. it? Well, I mean, I think it'll be quite a while until we can actually produce all the solar panels we need in Nigeria. Um, again, because we don't have power, we can't do it competitively. So it's kind of ironic that to generate, to, to, to manufacture the, <laughs> the the panels that you need to generate power, yeah. you can't you do need it power competitively. To generate it's, power. Exactly. It's, almost, it's, yeah. it's, it's almost the chicken and the egg yeah. situation. Yeah. Which one comes first? You know, because if you have to generate electricity, so take for instance, if you look at a company like Tesla, Tesla has what is called a gigafactory, and the gigafactory itself is being powered by solar panels, mm -hmm. and they're using it to generate, to, to manufacture lithium-ion batteries and all that. Now, if you look at that, even though in the US they have quite a huge uh, amount of power being generated, they're still relying on solar because they're trying to go clean, they're trying to go renewable. And then you look at a country like Nigeria, I, I don't understand the tariff. Because if you look at, in terms of investment, there are some companies in Nigeria, for instance, uh, there's the uh, Lumos Box. Mm. If you look at the Lumos Box, they've already done their business model, they've done their business plan, and when they were doing all those plans, tariff was zero. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, now they need to bring in solar panels, and they have to pay 10% uh, import tariff from them. And when they do that, what do you think that does to the customer? The price goes high. Right. Okay, yeah. let, let's take some steps back. I was talking to a geologist um, who's been at this for years, and he was talking about the fact that we have not necessarily explored other, all the forms of you, you know, renewable energy that we have in Nigeria. In fact, he made mention of certain states where there's gas just lying there untapped, and the government has failed to you know, try to drive people or investors into those areas. So I'm wondering, we're struggling with something, and the answer is just lying around there. Right. But we're not necessarily paying attention. <laughs> yeah, so I think on, on any, any energy source you look at for Nigeria, whether it's gas, whether it's solar, whether it's hydro, whether it's wind, whether it's biomass, we actually have the energy source. We just don't have the business models, the regulation, businesses to actually exploit it and get power to the people. So why don't we open our doors and say, hey, we have what you need. Come do it here. Mm -hmm. We need it. We need the, you know, the final product of what you, know, you can give to us. So why is it such a, uh, I don't know, why is it such a big deal for us to open our doors to these people to invest and do the business easily? Because it's not, they're coming, but the problem is they're not necessarily able to do this business and give it back to us at a reduced rate. So what I would say about that is that for every investor that comes into Nigeria, they are not, um, they are not philanthropists. Of course we know that. They're here to make profits. And by the end of the day, you know, I was listening, of course, like I said, in the backstage, and I could hear things like, you, you've already set your business model, and then after you've generated, mm. and then government comes and pegs your price. There is no mm. way I would look at my cost and then the only way I can actually be profitable is to either reduce costs or to increase my price. Yeah. Now, I can't increase my price, I can't reduce my cost. I'm kind of in a limbo, and if I'm an investor, if I look at it, I'm just going to decide and say, look, I'm out. Mm -hmm. And that's what you find happening, not just in the renewable energy sector. Again, when you look at the ease of doing business, now for, People like us, one of the things that would have helped us, for example, is if we had access to funding. And when I'm talking about funding, for example, what we realized is that a lot of consumers don't even, so we have a partnership with the bank, and then what we do is we give you our invoice, you know, we do the site inspection, give you the invoice, and then we tell you to go meet the bank for funding, and then you are able to pay over a 12-month period. Now, what's shocking is that when you tell people to pay over a 12-month period, once you mention, bank. Everybody runs away. Interest rates. <laughs> Interest rates, bank terms. Again, indiscipline on the part of the consumers. Yeah. Because by the end of the day, nobody wants to take a risk. 
and then the risk crystallizes on you, which is why you have the, uh, the business model where all they do is they'll give you the equipment and then you pay for the power being generated. Mm -hmm. But what our model is for you to own the equipment yourself. So you have a lot of disconnect. Again, it's only government that can actually do stuff like you're asking. Mm -hmm. uh, we can mm -hmm. do that. Nice. He can't even do mm -hmm. that. He's doing that, you know, he said he's been here for like two years. And they're doing a lot. But the truth is that without government support, we're just wasting our time. Right. So l let me actually talk about something around this. So the government actually did a whole process to basically... Um, attract foreign investment to do solar at utility scale. Mm. So there were 14 solar IPPs that were licensed. And these were now you know, international investors and some domestic investors, even in spite of the fact that the power sector was having its issues, even though transmission hadn't really been fixed, etc. 14 different consortia were ready to invest you know, millions and millions of dollars into this new, genera new solar generation. It would have added about another 1,000 megawatts to the, to the generation. You know, as they were going through the process, then suddenly the government said, "Okay, the tariff that we're going to we're going to pay you is, you know, this much less than what we had actually agreed," and so they all just walked away, or they're all basically just waiting. And so by now, we could have actually had those projects would have all been halfway done. Um, you know, e even with you know, yes, it would have been difficult for the transmission to absorb it, mm -hmm. but at this point, if they were at least in the process of being built, we could have found other ways. To use that power, we could have said, "Okay, the one in Katsina, just let it you gen distribute power to Katsina. Mm. Forget about the grid." But now, there's not even a, any soil has been turned. Nothing. But mm. all these international investors are ready to put money. I, I have a concern. Now, this might just be hearsay. This might not hold any water. But there have been critics who, critics of the government, basically, who have said the reason why we still are, are not is not necessarily because we're not able to figure this out if we want to. Mm. It's because we have people who are importing generators, people who are bringing all kinds of sizes of generators. Mm -hmm. The business is a market on its own. Mm -hmm. And some people feel that these people are lobbying and not letting, you know, the, the, the things that the are right supposed to be done. Hold. Yes, to be had. So they're saying mm -hmm. it's a deliberate act mm -hmm. for uh, to forestall, you know, right. us getting proper electricity up and running 24 hours around mm -hmm. the clock because uh, our neighbors like Ghana, I mean, they figured it out. Why can't we figure it out? Right. Especially going That's beyond <laughs> our solar panel, so, street lights, yeah. and all of those exactly. more feasible so, elements. Yeah. So another another mm. another thing I'd like to put into the mix would be the issue of uh, quality, would be the issue of regulation. Now, if you look into the Nigerian market space, because we deal on the retail side. And because we deal on the retail side, when you go into the Nigerian market and you look at the different bands uh, of inverters and batteries that exist in the market, I can almost tell you that I don't know everything offhand. And it's mind-boggling. And here's the challenge we have. Most batteries, most inverters that we have do not last more than a year. But how so affordable yeah. are these batteries? What's oh, the they are not. Cost? They are not affordable. So you have prices. So let me just give you some numbers. So if you want to get the 200 amps 12 volt batteries today, if you go to the popular Alaba markets, you can get batteries for as low as 75,000 naira. That's not low. Oh, and that's then you need really low. <laughs> how many batteries would you then need if you're it, having it's, a four-bedroom house? And so, a so now you have that at, uh, mm -hmm. like I said, seventy-five thousand. And in Lagos, you can get batteries as high as two hundred and fifty thousand naira for one. Now here's the problem: the one you would buy from Alaba, I beseech you, brethren, do not go there <laughs> because by the end of the day, not to badmouth anybody, you know, there are no checks in place. There was a time we had an issue with a popular brand in the market. We actually went to Consumer Protection Council, and I don't want to say this on air, you won't believe their responses. I was frustrated. The only reason why we were able to get any redress was because that particular brand, a lot of us installers and retailers, we boycotted them. And when they were not having sales, they had no choice but to come back to say, OK, what's the issue? And then they now started trying to address. But did you at any point try to reach the CPC and then say, hey, oh, these yes, are I some did. of the issues and what? Oh, yes, I did. Did they come in? Want me to say that on there? Well, <laughs> it's That's the consumer protection so, so, agency's so, 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 duty so, to, to, so, to protect your rights. Let, let, me, let me tell you what CPC said to me. Oha, first time I went to CPC. They told me they did not have electricity to print a letter to send to them. <laughs> Quite an Months later, they said they did not have paper yeah. to use to print 
to send to them. Eventually, when they got them on ground, we had a meeting. At the meeting, they sent, the company sent the CSO mm. and the head of the service center. So by the end of the day, we were frustrated. Do you mm. understand? I couldn't get any redress. CPC still hasn't gotten back to us on the outcome of that meeting we had. So, so we, 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 are, well, we, we are running out of time. But <laughs> yeah. had, I just want to yeah. last off, really, yeah. if we are going to look at an energy mix in Nigeria now, biofuel, solar panel, renewable energy, hydroelectric power, uh, wind energy, across Nigeria, how would you say we should pitch our different tents and areas uh, of strength. Look, in 60 seconds. Okay, with a 200,000 megawatt gap, we, I, I don't think we, we need to plan that hard. That You should do tens of thousands of megawatts of everything. And again, we have endless sun, we have endless water, mm -hmm. we have endless mm -hmm. trash, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have endless um, gas, we have you know large gas supply. Everything is there. It's just we need the, in, we need the policy in place and then we need the investors mm -hmm. and then we need the right you know, just the, the right ecosystem to just bring it out and generate the power and get it to Nigerians. Yeah. It's Thank all you. There. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Weber Boa, CEO All On, uh, he's an energy expert, and of course, <laughs> Olua Sheon Fadira, nice renewable energy there. professional. Thank you so much uh, for you, being gentlemen. part of this conversation. Nice well, we have to take a break and uh, bring you the news update. Nigeria Decides continues right after that. Stay with us. <laughs>